Country Kids. Um, so this morning looks a little different than what you're used to, but we're just going to continue on talking about Jeremiah and where we left off there. Um, for this lesson today, you are going to need to get a piece of paper and a pen. So you can go grab those and then I'll tell you what they're needed for. So now that you've got your paper and your pen, we are going to be talking about hope today. So on your paper, you can write out the word hope and we're just going to be talking a little bit about what hope actually means. So what do you think hope means? You can turn to someone around you or if you're by yourself, you can talk to yourself and just make a guess on what you think hope, hope might mean. But the word hope in its truest meaning means having an expectation that something will happen. So as Christians, our hope comes from Jesus because we have the expectation that he is going to work in our life and that we can trust in God in any circumstance. And so it's really cool that today's lesson is all about trusting and hoping in God, um, especially with the way things are going in our world right now. Um, God remains our rock. And so, yeah, we'll be talking about hope. Um, so with your paper on hope, something you can be doing, we're going to do a little bit of a game. So you, um, once I'm done explaining instructions, you can pause the video and play the game with the people around you. So take your paper and you're going to pick one person and you are going to hide the word hope. And then as a group, you are going to be finding hope. And so it just kind of goes along with our world right now of looking for hope in the midst of chaos or scary situations. So hide the word hope and get maybe your parents to go look for it and see what different hope things you can find. I'm going to go hide hope. We're going to play the game too and she's going to have to go find hope just like how we have to look for it in the real world. So I'm just walking in the gym and I'm going to hide it somewhere where I don't think she'll find it. We're going to see how long it takes her to go. Okay, so I'm going to put it in and hope in the ping pong balls. Okay, as good as it's gonna get. So let's hope she finds it and we're gonna go get her to look for it. So happy hunting for hope as well. Okay, so hope is hidden. I'm gonna go grab Justine and we're gonna see how long it takes her. I have a feeling it might take her a while. Fingers crossed, it's kind of sticking out a bit, but here we go. Hey, Miss Justine, you have to go find hope. All right. Happy hunting. Do I get any hints? Uh, what do we think? No. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a hint. It's in the kids' zone area. verse 4 and it says for the word of the Lord holds true and we can trust everything he does and then the other one is Psalm 119 verse 105 and it says your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path so I want you just to be thinking about some of the things we can learn from those verses um, what do you think they mean about how we can trust in God and God being a light to our path 
What does that look like for you? You can talk about it with the people around you. So this month we've been learning about Jeremiah and we learned that God created Jeremiah for a special purpose. And that purpose was that he was created to be a prophet, which means he received messages from God to share with his people. And so last week we learned about how Jeremiah had some complaints and how God wants us to complain to him because he wants us to be talking to him. And so you guys can also say some of the things that you're worried about or you're complaining about to God and God will respond. If you missed last week, um, you can find that story in Jeremiah chapter 12. Um, this week we are talking about how Jeremiah trusted and had hope in God. So God has given us a ton of promises where we can trust and rely on him. So some of his promises are that he promises to love his people. So I want you to make a heart with your hands and you can say God promises to love you because you are one of his people. Another promise that God tells us is that he is going to shepherd his people. So that means that God is going to guide us. He's going to lead us. Um, the Bible tells us that Jesus is actually called the good shepherd and he takes care of us and we can be like sheep. We can just rest and trust that he knows what's best. So uh, I want you to make a shepherd's staff with your arm kind of hooked like that, some, something like that. And then the other promise is that God will strengthen his people. So now's your chance to show off your muscles. So God strengthens us. He gives us the strength we need to keep going. And so in times like this, we can trust that even though we might feel scared or weak, God gives us strength. That is a promise that he made us and he keeps his promises. And another promise that God made is that God promises to redeem his people. And God sent Jesus to redeem us. And so Jesus died on the cross for us. So spread out your arms and you can make a cross. So Jesus came and he died on the cross to take away our sins. That's what it means to redeem. He takes away the punishment that we deserve by living in a sinful world and by doing bad things. God has forgiven us. Um, Jesus died on the cross for us. And so that's a really, really cool promise that we have because we can trust and have hope that because Jesus redeems us, we will have eternal life with him. When we accept Jesus and we ask him to forgive our sins, we have that eternal hope of a future, of a life spent with Jesus and God and walking in unity. And so these are really cool promises to hold on to this week. So I want you, anytime you feel scared, to remember these things and to talk to God about it. promises to Jeremiah. Jeremiah's world was falling apart. Jerusalem was in danger of being captured by different nations and Israel was torn apart by two different sets of kings between Israel and Judah. And so Jeremiah had a lot to worry about and God knew that Jeremiah was in a scary place in a scary time and that his own people were turning away from him. So God gave these promises to Jeremiah so that Jeremiah could have hope that he would know that God is in control and that God is looking after him. So Jeremiah was able to see that God loves him, God will strengthen him and that God shepherds him and that God had a plan for redemption. And it's pretty cool because we now get to see what that plan was and we get to see Jesus in that. So since last week, <laughs> I think it was St. Patrick's Day, and so what I want you to do right now is to go touch something green. Yes. Okay, did you do it? All right, so I was touching something green. Does anyone know what this is? This is called a shamrock. It's also just a three-leaf clover. 
And these are known for being a part of St. Patrick's Day. So St. Patrick's Day, we celebrate on March 17th. So that was on Wednesday. Some of you might have even walked around the neighborhood looking for these shamrocks in people's windows. Um, but the purpose of St. Patrick's Day isn't just about wearing green so you don't get pinched. It's actually about remembering a man who was a missionary for many, many years in a country called Ireland. Do any of you know what a missionary is? Do any of you maybe know a missionary? And almost all of you would know uh, Mrs. Laurie. So she's a missionary. She um, was away for a little bit and she's on her way back here actually. So she um, went to somewhere else and she was telling people about Jesus. That's what a missionary does. So St. Patrick, he was a missionary in Ireland who was telling people about Jesus. And March 17th was actually the day that he died. And so we celebrate St. Patrick's Day um, to remember the things that he did. So I'm going to read you a little story about St. Patrick. So once there was a boy named Maywin who at the age of 16 was kidnapped from his home in Great Britain. The raiders that took him away from his family sold him as a slave to a king in Ireland. His job was to take care of the king's sheep day and night. He felt very lonely. He began to remember some Bible verses that his grandfather had taught him. He prayed that God would save him. He would wake up early to pray and pray late at night. He even prayed in the rain and the snow. One day, Maywin dreamed that he was going home and that his ship was ready. He knew it was God speaking to him. So he left and walked 200 miles to a boat that was headed to Great Britain. That's a long way. He got there just as the ship was about to sail, but the captain would not let him get on. Maywin didn't know what to do, so he prayed to God. Just then, a young boy ran up to him and told him the captain had changed his mind. When he returned home, his family was glad to see him. He told them about how God had worked in his life. He was like a different person, and so he changed his name to Patrick. He began to study the Bible and learn more about God. Patrick had another dream, telling him to go back to Ireland and to tell them about God. Most people in Ireland worshipped false gods and practiced black magic. He went back there and taught people about God for 30 years. He baptized thousands of people and formed hundreds of churches. He showed the people how to copy the Bible so that they would always have it. And he died on March 17, 461, the day that we call St. Patrick's Day. So St. Patrick, he had to trust in God when he was a missionary in Ireland. It was probably pretty scary for him there, surrounded by people who didn't believe in God and who practiced black magic. So St. Patrick had to trust in God. Are there similarities between St. Patrick and Jeremiah that you think you might be able to find? <laughs> One of the things that I found that I thought was quite similar was the fact that everybody around Jeremiah was worshiping false gods and not following God. Even though they knew God, they were God's people, they weren't following him. And I think that's kind of similar to St. Patrick, how everybody around him was not following God, but some of them didn't even know God, and this was after Jesus. But both St. Patrick and Jeremiah had to trust in God, and they both had God's words to keep them strong and to give them strength and to give them hope. And both St. Patrick and Jeremiah spent tons of time praying. Um, and that's something we talked about last week, is how we can pray to God no matter what we say, no matter what we do, we can pray to him. And so that's my challenge for you guys, is to pray to God this week and to tell him some of your worries and fears and some of the things that you might not understand. God already knows. God's already been here. Um, the Bible tells us that God's in the past, the present, and the future, that he's outside of time. So God already knows what's going to happen. So I want you to take some time and pray to God this week. So we're going to go into our small groups. And how does that work when we're not at church? Um, well, I'm going to give you your activity and your small group is just the people in your house. And here's the cool thing. You can still earn ping pong balls. 
So all you have to do is take a picture of your work and email it to justine at udac.ca and you can earn your team ping pong balls. And then whenever we come back, if your team has filled up their box, then you will get a party.